Welcome to Send It John Boats. In today's video, we're going to be doing part three of our How to Paint a John Boat Like a Pro series. Stick around and check this video out because this paint job is sweet. And this is the final paint video because we about ready to send it. Send it. If you like John Boats, mud motors, and things that make you want to just yell, yeah, yeah then you've come to the right place, partner. If this is your first time on the channel, make sure you go right down below here, hit that subscribe button and a little bell thingy right next to it so that you won't miss any of our upcoming videos. If you're watching this video and you haven't seen part one and part two, you need to go back and watch those. I'll leave a link to them right up here so that you can go check those videos out. If you don't watch those first, you're gonna be really, really lost awesome once we start working here in just a second. So let's pick up right where we left off. Send it. Welcome to day number three of this paint job. Oh my God, it is so cold out here this morning. I do not want to be out here, but I've got to get this paint job done. So I've been out here since daylight this morning. I've already got the other side of the boat done with the next layer of stencils. I've also done the back, so now I'm working on this side here. So one of the reasons I wanted to do this paint job outside is so that I can show you how to work with some of the difficulties in dealing with changing temperatures. So like yesterday during the day, it got up to like almost 70 degrees, but at nighttime it's getting down into the 40s which what it's doing is making the stencils contract and expand and some of them are not sticking. You can see this one right here that's going over this rivet. Yesterday it was laid down nice and flat and now it's starting to pop up on the other sides and it's kind of lost its elasticity because it's so cold outside. So I'm going to show you a little trick how you can get around working stuff like this. So I've got one of my stencils peeled and I've got this rivet where the stencil is not sticking to it very well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the biggest portion of the stencil and I'm going to stick it right over the top of that rivet. And then I'm just going to press it in really good with my finger and then work my way around the edge and get that area nice and sealed as best I can. Then I'm going to come back and work the rest of the stencil on the way down. Hit it with a squeegee one good time. Now when we spray our next layer of paint, I won't have to worry about paint spraying up underneath that part of the stencil that did not stick very well. So I'm gonna work my way down the side of the boat and find any areas like this and go ahead and put just a random stencil on it to cover it up. And once I have all those areas covered, then I'll take the rest of the stencils and patch in between. All right, so a little after lunchtime on day number three, I just finished all the stencil work. Now it is time for our last coat of paint, which is gonna be our beige color. So I'm gonna jump inside the boat. I'm gonna spray everything on the inside first to cover up the old paint job, because I don't really wanna look at it anymore. And then I'll jump on the outside, move the camera so you guys can see, and I'll paint the rest of the boat. Now, same thing as we did yesterday. Just make sure that when you spray, if you're looking at the side of the boat, make sure you're spraying at perfect 90 degrees so you don't get any overspray underneath those stencils. And all we're trying to do is just get the color on there. We're not throwing a bunch of paint on. So it is day number five on this paint job. Actually, night number five, because it's really dark. I just got the lights on so you guys can see me. What happened to day number four, you ask? A great question. I'll show you exactly what I was doing all day long, day number four. I was peeling all this junk off the boat. This is all of the stencils. It took two entire days of me sitting here and just picking these things off one at a time, and it was the longest process ever but it is finally all done so we're done with paint stencils are off everything is clean it is ready to be clear coated only one small issue it's raining just my luck i swear this boat is cursed so we're going to call it quits for tonight we will be back to start day number six bright and early finally it's a clear coat on this boat. Welcome to day number six of our paint job. It is finally time for clear coat. We are one step closer to being done with this paint job. 
finally. So what I've done is I went over the entire boat with the same naphtha that I was using earlier. Like I said, you can use Prepsol or whatever you want, just as long as it's a good wax and grease remover that doesn't leave any residue on the surface. Make sure that you use a lint-free towel or rag. I buy these disposable ones at the Auto Body Paint Supply Store. You can use that or a blue shop rag or anything you want. Just make sure that it does not leave any lint behind but you want to give the boat one more good wipe down to ensure that nothing is gonna be in your clear coat. It is very important that you give the boat one final wipe down before you do this clear coat because as you can see from the video footage I'm showing you now, this boat was just painted two days ago and just from sitting out here, even under a canopy, it's still got dust and debris and junk all over. So you want to give it one more good cleaning before you put that clear coat on. So for clear coat, we're gonna be using One Hit Wonders flat clear coat system. This is a two part system. I'm not gonna go into mixing it, but the mix ratio is four to one. It's four parts of this stuff to one part of this stuff. Not difficult. This is the actual clear and this is the hardener. There's tons of videos out there on how to do the ratios properly, but my PPS system has the ratios on the side of it. So all I do is pour four parts of this in there and one part of this and it's good to go. And also make sure that you're wearing gloves during this entire final process. You don't want to leave any of your oily, greasy booger hook fingerprints all over this thing. We spent way too much time on it. Let's keep it clean, guys. Now today is a terrible day to be spraying clear coat. As much as I would love to pull this thing in the paint booth and do it in there, I'm sticking with the outside for you DIY guys to show you that this can be done at home. It just takes a little bit of adjustment. So what we're gonna do is make a little adjustment on our spray gun and actually our spraying technique to help us combat some of the wind that we've got today. Normally we would be spraying about six to eight inches away and we'd have our fan pattern set for full wide open so we get as much material on the boat as possible with each pass. The only thing we're gonna change is our fluid. We're gonna dial our fluid in just a little bit to not spray as much fluid and we're gonna move a little bit closer. What this will do is it will reduce that distance that the wind has to really mess with the spray pattern. This is just something you're gonna have to play with. Like I said, there's tons of videos on how to do this on YouTube, just go check them out. But basically all we're doing to spray in the wind is reduce the fluid and move a little bit closer to the part. But the good news is spraying clear coat is easy. It's just like spraying paint out of one of these. It's no different. Use the same technique, 50% overlap on each one of your passes. Nice smooth strokes. You don't have to worry about doing none of this flipping at the end and none of that stuff. Just get 90 degrees to your part or your boat in this case. Do your 50% overlap on your passes and coat the whole thing. One more side note before we get started. You do not want to use the same gun that you painted the boat with to clear coat it with. You want to have two separate guns. This gun right here is my clear coat gun. It has never had colored paint in it ever. It only gets clear coat. I'm gonna go get this stuff mixed up and we'll get to spraying. So we're done with the clear coat. And I forgot to mention this earlier. One of the really cool things about the One Hit Wonder Flat Clear is it is a one and done spray. You spray one coat on and you're finished. No need to put any more on. It's plenty tough just like it is. Now I mixed up an entire quart and I think I got about four-ish ounces left. So, so that kind of gives you a reference point. I used one quart of clear for a 16 foot boat with float pods. So anything less, one quart is probably all you need. Now I'll also mention that this stuff does look glossy when you're spraying it. It's not that it is gloss, it's really flat, it's just wet. So as it dries, it will flatten down. It takes about an hour for it to get to its full flatness and dry to the touch. It takes about 24 hours before it's fully cured and you can really start moving the boat around. So I'm gonna give this some time to dry, we'll take a look at it and then it'll be ready for the next step. So day number seven of the paint job that seems to never end. So the clear coat's now dry. We've got to put our bed liner on that top rail all the way around the boat. And I'm going to be putting on top of the float pods. So to start out, I went back with our red scotch bright pad. I scuffed everything around that top rail and on top of the float pods to get it ready to accept the new bed liner that we're going to be using. So after I got everything scuffed, I went through and wiped everything down with wax and grease remover so I could make sure there was nothing like dust or dirt or, you know, contaminants and stuff left on the surface that would affect my new bed liner. 
So once everything was good and clean, I went through and taped off everything that I did not want to get paint on it with frog tape. You can use regular painter's tape for this if you want. I just like frog tape. It's what I use in the shop all the time and it's what I had. So frog taped everything on the inside of the boat to give me a nice clean paint line and on the outside of the boat. And then I went through with some plastic drop cloth and just tore off little pieces so that I could tape the drop cloth up to the tape line where I was at. And then once I got the drop cloth put down and in place, I went through and I taped the entire rim of the top of the drop cloth to make sure that no overspray would get underneath it. Now the bed liner product that we're gonna be using today is a aerosol can spray on bed liner. It's made by Iron Armor. You can buy this stuff at Harbor Freight. I've used it on a few other parts of this project and I've used it in the past. It seems to work really great, but it does have one drawback. And that's gonna be the spray nozzle on the can. I don't actually have a can of it here with me, but I will show you what the issue is. What will happen is you'll be spraying and then all of a sudden it'll just stop. It's like it's clogged. The way I have found that works best to get around this is if you take the spray nozzle, as soon as it clogs, twist the actual nozzle around a few times. That seems to break up whatever is in there that's causing it to clog wipe off the front where the tip is at and then just get back to spraying. Another thing I noticed when I was using it is that you can't do like a normal spray where you psss and let go. You need to actually continue spraying the entire time and if the nozzle starts clogging, stop, give it a couple twists, wipe the tip off and then get right back to spraying. You don't, once you start spraying, you don't want to let off of that nozzle pressure. Out of the three or four cans that I used, I only had one can that did this to me. Seems to be like some kind of quality control issue with their little nozzles, but I mean, it's cheap Harbor Freight stuff, but the, the coating itself works really good. It's just the nozzles kind of suck. So the bed liner dried actually pretty quickly. It was about 60 degrees and pretty windy that day. We had a storm coming in later that afternoon. So as soon as it was dry to the touch, I went ahead and ripped all the tape off and it was good to go. Be sure to check out some of our channel sponsors like these guys, Freedom Lube. I've got links to them down in the description box below as well as discounts if you want to use them. They are the ones that help support this channel and keep us rolling. Also, if you're interested in using One Hit Wonder paint like we used on this John Boat project, I've got a link down in the description box below where you can check out One Hit Wonder paint online. You can order from them directly online and they will ship straight to your door. And I got a $5 off coupon. Go down there and use that coupon code below and get $5 off your order at One Hit Wonder. Now we're gonna roll those bloopers here for you in just a second, but as always, let us remember, money can't buy happiness, but it can buy you a boat. Bye guys. It's now dry, we've got to put our, uh, the, the, yeah, you know, the, uh-huh, yep. Purple Squirrel Lamp 7 Blueberry Muffins. So day number seven of the paint job that never... <laughs> that's not seven, that's like nine. Seven, nine, seven, seven. Sorry, my, my finger still hurts. Give me a break. So what we're gonna do is in spread, in spread, in spread. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be doing part is it three? We just, yeah, we did part two already, so we're on three. Yes, one, two, three.
home with me. Watch this video because this paint job is like freaking awesome. I gotta come up with a like a why it's like my brain just shuts down when I'm in the middle of ah, ah. if you haven't seen part one and part two yeah one two one. what is the deal with counting today I'm gonna get this I promise Drop.